Hi everyone and welcome, this is Sherlock again, and today we're going to be seeing the basics of the play-by-play -play road. So, I've written th down a few things here that you should really pay attention to. The first one is, as a PvP, you are the leader of the conversation. You're the, you are the alpha male of the duo, okay? So that means, if you want to talk about something, you're the one who has to lead towards that thing. If you want to, if you want the conversation to go in a certain way, you are the one who has to send it this way. Um, this also means that you are the one holding the microphone. Do not be afraid of cutting off your partner. So, for example, if your core caster is explaining something very passionately about, I don't know, say jungle tracking, and in the meantime one of the junglers decide to gank and there's an action that starts off, if your color caster doesn't stop talking, you have to cut him off. You have to start talking, speak louder than he does, speak with more energy than he does, and when he shuts up, because he will, you get, your, you get yourself rolling and you start discussing. You have to pretty much imagine that, you are, that the both of you are in the casting booth physically and one of you doesn't have the microphone doesn't have a microphone so let's say this microphone here doesn't exist you only have one for two and it's a very bad mic so if you if you're not speaking directly into it nobody can hear you well the pvp is going to be the one who holds the microphone and he decides when the co the color caster gets to speak so for example if he hands it over that's when the, the he, he starts speaking, and that's when the color caster can start talking. Now, if the PvP cast, uh, if the PvP caster start talking again, it means the microphone is directly in, directly in front of him, and so the color caster can't speak anymore. That's what I mean when you, when I say you are the leader. Now, one more component of that is that as a PvP, you are acting as the in-game host. So. Whenever you're between in between games, you sometimes have a um, an official host by your side, but sometimes this is not the case, and it is just the two of you. So you are also acting as the host outside. Now let's say the game st the game starts. You get into draft. You announce it. You say, and now we're going into the draft, ladies and gentlemen. This is say resolve against envision. A round two of the UK LC, blah blah blah. Now you get into game, you you get through the draft, you get into game. Once again, you announce the teams, and maybe you, if this is for example the first time that you get into the tournament, you can say, and we have uh, Huni in the top side, uh, in the top lane with Speaker in the jungle, Faker in the mid lane, and Deft and Malta in the in the bottom lane. And you can, for example, present the, the champions a little bit if there is no draft phase, for example, or if the draft phase was really quick because you're viewing the game live, which can be a possibility. Um, most of the time, though, you will have three minute spectator delay to talk about the drafts and stuff, so no real need to do that. But it is good when the game starts to once again announce the teams, say, Resolve on the blue side, and on the red side, Envision. Game 2, 1-0 in favor of Resolve, for example. Um, also, one more thing you should have to do sometimes is, well, there's a technical issue, and the staff might want to communicate something to you. Then, it is your job as the PvP caster to be the one telling it to the audience. So. For example, there's a pause, one player provides an explanation, and you are the one who has to present that explanation to the audience, saying, and as one player has to go to the bathroom real quick, we are going to be having a quick pause or in between matches. And since we want to resolve a technical issue, we will be having five minute downtime, but we will be shortly back. Don't, don't go anywhere. All right. Now, this is all about the identity of the PvP caster. Now, here are some tips that are more general. Um, leave as little blanks as possible. So, basically, there are two schools about that. The one where 
you feel like you, some casters feel like it's not necessary to be talking all the time, but most casters follow this rule, which is leave as little blanks as possible. Whenever there is a, a, a slight blank or whenever your color caster is done speak, speaking, sorry, you should immediately take the microphone back and have a, a, a sentence or a question ready. So whenever your color caster like, has is done explaining a point while he was explaining you're already thinking about the qu next question you wanted to ask him so that once he's done you immediately ask him that question or for example just as soon as uh, as you're done talking you make it clear for your color caster that you don't have anything more to say by lowering the voice in your dialogue so this is a rule to follow. I strongly advise you to to try it out. Of course, rules will be made to be broken, but we'll leave that to uh, the technical videos. Don't be rude to players ever. No swear words. This is very mandatory. This is absolutely mandatory. Players are really fond of getting casted because they feel like it puts them into value. If you are rude to the players, or if you if you flame them, if you say oh, X player is really shit, or he's playing, uh, he's making tons of stupid mistakes, I don't understand that player. This is critically bad, because it doesn't provide anything, it doesn't explain anything, and most of all, it devaluates the player, not only to the audience, but also to himself. So, do not ever do that. Um, instead, you can say, this player is doing that thing, I don't understand why. Or, hmm, you know, I'm a I'm a Skarner one trick, for example, and I like to play Skarner this way, but this guy plays it another way. It's fine. Um, this is something you might have heard if you, <laughs> whenever Skarner, for example, is uh is on on the screen. In a in a professional game. No swear words, obviously. The, you want to keep the content family friendly, and also, simply speaking. It's not very classy. Um, never analyze unless you've been a color caster before. Do not ever do that. Because if you say something stupid, your color caster will have a very hard time bouncing back from that, especially considering that you should never be confronting your other caster up front. You never want to do that. If, you're, if the other caster says one thing, you have, to you have to do with it, as if it were true. So, if your color caster says Lee Sin is a, is a mid to late game champion, then okay, he's a mid to late game champion. Whatever you think, it doesn't matter. If you think he's early, you can turn it in a, in a certain way. But we'll see that in conversa conversational skills. Now, I want to show you guys a couple of examples to see just how, for example, um, like all of the different aspects of color casting. One more rule, by the way. Um, do not ever think twice about what you're saying. So specifically, sp uh, specifically, do not ever correct your own mistakes. If, for example, you're, I don't know, um, casting this game, for example, and it's a Nico support, and you accidentally say, "Oh, the Morgana is gonna go in. She's gonna find the. She's gonna find find the route. Morgana gets in, and the Alistar is going in." With the pep pulverized, Caitlyn gets stunned, but the burst is too high on the Kaiser. Do not, do not correct yourself by saying, "Oh, the the Nico finds the uh, the the Morgana finds the route." Oh no, it's a Nico. My bad, because you're breaking the flow of the move, and no one actually cares if you mistook Morgana with Nico. Okay, we'll see that a lot more into the conversational skills and also the confidence video. So I want to dive a little bit into uh, some plays that are that I think illustrate perfectly well the job of play-by-play -play caster. The first one here is FlyQuest versus versus 100 Thieves in, during uh, Summer Split 2018. This game is pivot, pivotal to the seeding for playoffs, and right here FlyQuest are playing their qualification against 100 Thieves. So this game is really intense. We are 32 minutes, and the bases are 
the base of uh, FlyQuest is very vulnerable. And it might be a race here. We'll see what happens. Is, is this gonna be the a base, base race? race? Uh, is this the FlyQuest base race call into the enemy base? Afro uh, going to be taken low, take go. it down. This so you see just how, for example, he lays down the, the introduction to the move, saying, is this the base race? And he repeats it once again with a lot more energy into his voice to quickly kickstart the move so that the tension that wasn't there before suddenly settles in. Now let's keep on listening. Could be it, Ryu, onto the inhibitor himself. TP going to be used here. Somebody's trying to have 100 thieves, trying to come in and help. Oh, going. Okay, play close, he goes down. It's going to be Nexus turn. Now one three is out. FlyQuest on the bandage. Sound strikes are going to be used. FlyQuest on the Nexus. Thieves on oh the Nexus. God. It is point for point. And FlyQuest win. So you can listen to this play and already f feel how messy it is just because the color caster has been a little bit too present in the move, right? But the play-by-play -play in himself, he climbed, uh, he managed to slowly make his way up towards the, the energy spikes of the move by every single time a structure was taken down, he would up the, the energy in his voice and he would also accelerate the, the debit of, um, of words in his, uh, in his cast. So, so that you feel the tension starts to rapidly grow throughout the move and the additions of the color cast are saying things like oh my god they're doing it only accentuates it now whether this was good, was good or bad is up to debate but this is one thing that you can do as a pvp is to set yourself up with for example is this a base race is this a base race and then have uh, have a, a, yet another sentence throughout the move to reset your uh, your energy voice to then again climb up like he did when he said TP's coming down. Next we have Fnatic vs G2 week nine day one of the 2019 uh, spring split. To remind you guys, this was highlighted as the game of the century. And we are 42 minutes in, game is super back and forth. Fnatic had the advantage all game long and G2 are slowly grinding back. Now, Elder Dragon is on the play and we're gonna see here how exactly the color caster is setting uh, Medic up by dropping the tension in his voice to indicate to Medic that it's his turn to pick up the microphone and then you're going to see how exactly Medic deals with a team fight that happens all at once. Fnatic will shred this Baron so quickly. Oh. Four elemental drakes. G2, they know they have to look for the team fight before the objective goes down. It's getting low. Yankos has to make a move. 6,000 HP left on the and the Realm Walk coming out as well. So you see um, Ender right here. He 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 is the one, despite being a carcaster, he's the one who climbs up the tension in that scene, right? He accelerates his uh he accelerates his uh his his word debit and he's also increasing the energy in his voice and dramatically emphasizing on the, the importance of the objective, right? And he suddenly drops the level of his voice and Medic starts picking up. And because the the level of energy that Ender has has um, set in place is so high, it feels super natural for Medic to pick up the cast doing rap god, rap god mode. <laughs> uh, so he can actually rap god, and nobody will pay attention because it feels super natural because the flow in the energy has remained the same. They're just going onto the back, they're looking up. Oh no, my god! A great flag! G2, the perfect team fight! They take it all! They take down three! They even get the chase down as well! The Elder will be in their eyes as Fnatic just die one by one! And you see here, like, the team fight has suddenly blew up and it was all at once. There was, there was not a single chance for Medic to actually focus on a specific ability or on a specific thing happening in that team fight, right? And he dealt with it by not paying attention to anything. He just felt something from that team fight, right? He felt complete obliteration of Fnatic and he just went with it. He said the flank from Iralia and that was the, the very last thing 
that he was uh, uh, that he was able to distinguish in that team fight, and then he just went on to say G two the perfect team fight they take down three and he just goes with the feeling. Now let's get on to a freak of freaks versus SK Telecom. This is a very messy team fight, and you're just gonna see how exactly Atlas deals with that team fight. In terms of teamfight readability, this is absolute nightmare for a play-by-play -play caster. And you're going to see every single time Atlas fails to read what happens on the screen, he just resets everything and use the time where he pronounces the, the, the reset phrase to look for something again. And typically for Atlas, and this is his signature, he will say, I'm not sure of what's going on or stuff like, this teamfight is a mess, isn't it? Aiming is going to stay alive for the moment. But now, Senen spending a lot of time with a black and right, white screen. Oh, Clid. Yeah, Clid's going to be able to get the flank here. Dread is going to fall. Faker goes over the wall by accident, and Dread flashes what? trying to get out of the way. This is a really weird team fight. It's aiming off to the side. Clid gets down into the brush, but then immediately Jeez. has to go golden. Yes. This is an insane Earth. team fight. It's Teddy. Turn now gets face off. to face with Keen. The flash over the Weaver's wall. Yukal's going to fall, but Keen might have found it. Marta to get out of the way, but oh my goodness, he's everywhere. The stopwatch going to be used. What a disaster of a fight. But SKT, <laughs> they will win unless Aiming can kill four people by himself. The answer to that is no. So you can see how messy that team fight was. And yet Atlas casted it by focusing on anything he could actually catch on the screen, right? So Faker going over the wall, and then suddenly something super weird happens, like three stopwatches at the same time. And he's like, what the hell? So he actually expresses his confusion on screen. Being a PvP caster it means all about going with the flow of what you're seeing and expressing it yourself. Exactly what their responsibility is to the team fights. So right here we have another example that I think is a very bad um, is a very bad professional cast. So you s you can see here, 31 minutes. Fnatic is zero and four. So to put that back into context, we have uh, Fnatic who just went to World Finals against IG, and they started the split of the, the first split of the LEC going zero and four. So people were like, eh, Fnatic, world champion, world finalist. Am I right? <laughs> and People were having a lot of doubts about, about Fnatic's performances, and this was the very first. Um, this was the very first game that they won, and 31 minutes into the game, we have 4,000 gold lead for Fnatic. So this should be a hype moment, especially since Reckless is actually about to get a pentakill. But pay close attention to not only the way the team fight starts, where. Dracos has to cut off Froskarin because she wa she wasn't setting up Dracos for Kikis and Wadid coming up. And at the same time, Dracos is not giving a lot of energy, is letting the energy go down drastically for, Rex for Reckless's pentakill at the end of the play, when it should have been a super hype moment because it was supposed to be the return of, Fnatic's of Fnatic being good in shape. Nemesis constantly zoning away what did, constantly dissuading him from looking for the engagement. Frostgrind, this could be the last dance. Profit finding a good engage. Reckless locked up. Wadid buying a little bit more time, but he's just instantly deleted. Proxy bringing multiple nerves back. Profit trying to find anything. Set cuts in the middle of the team, but he's just going to get taken out. Triple for Reckless. He wants a little bit more. Can he get anything else in the exchange? The Quadra. I cannot believe it. The Penta kill for Reckless. He is back, ladies and gentlemen, taking down Rogue. A good way to get him started in this season. And finally, we have some momentum back in Fnatic. The fact that it's reckless as the hard carry, the pentakill. And you can see how just exactly picking up the cast back again as if it were some normal move, not making anything special out of that reckless pentakill, not giving anything, uh, not, not taking anything out of it, it just makes it feel kind of dull. When in fact, it is a pentakill from reckless at the time where he was at his lowest low. So, it should have been a, a very hyped move. Now, with all of these examples done, I hope you have a better idea of what, do, what being a PvP means, and also have a better idea of all the skills, all the, all the styles that a PvP can have. 
we will be going into details with each uh, we will be going into details with each technique and each skill that you have to pick up later on in the technique videos. Have a good one.